Hello, my name is Christoph Mariak. I want to talk to you about this project, about uh, a USB audio DAC. So what is a DAC? A DAC is a digital to analog converter that transforms your digital audio into analog form that can be sent to an amplifier so you can enjoy the music. External DACs, dedicated units like the ones I'm doing, are generally thought to be superior to the integrated DAC, in, especially inside computers or CD players for that matter, or set-top boxes. Some years ago, that's how it all started. I was reading um, posts on DIY audio forums and there are so many people who were saying that the chips, the digital to analog converter chips, that were built like 20 years ago that used a different technique, which is called the R2R or none of sampling types. They sounded so much better than the mainstream chips that are produced today. And I'm, it really got me wondering whether people were deluded or not. And I wanted to try it because the, the technical arguments for that were pretty convincing. There were current they were uh, appealing to my knowledge of the technology and i had to try it for myself and the result is that i built one of such decks and it sounded amazing so i had a few friends come at my home and i would uh, uh, ask them to listen to the deck and they all thought the same that, that it sounded great and what they said was can you build one for me <laughs> so I decided not to hand solder three, four, five units. I decided to design a printed circuit board and to make a very compact unit that could be battery powered. First, because battery is a great source for a clean uh, power supply to the DAC. That is one key uh, to getting a good sound quality. And the other thing is that I want it to be small enough so that I could go around at parties and, and at some friend's place and have them listen to it. So I designed, I came up with a small board there that you can put in the pocket. You have uh, wires that you can uh, solder and attach a, a wire and battery clip, or you can power it through an external transformer that would work with laptop power supplies, which is great because this stuff can be found everywhere, but it can run on batteries. And I started to sell it on eBay as a hobby. And people would would come back like crazy and, and telling me how they love the sound of this unit. However, uh, most people were using it for DIY projects, like uh, adding that to an existing CD player or an amplifier. Uh, but um, most people wanted just to use a DAC in their home uh, uh, stereo they wanted a, a unit that had the batteries already soldered on and an enclosure. So I came up with this uh, unit that has the same electronics, about the same electronics inside, slightly improved power supply, comes standard with two batteries. I'll, I'll pop up the board here. That's the board inside. That's, that's basically the same device, but with a larger printed circuit board that is more practical because you can put the batteries directly on it. They're better connected and provide lower noise operation and it's just more practical to use. But the next thing that people wanted is a USB interface. Um, now the thing is uh, I started a company called Starting Point Systems in 2006 where the main product is a USB uh, interface precisely. It has some digital and analog I.O. It's a very general purpose unit for data acquisition, robotics, um, sensors, smart buildings. Uh, you can connect different stuff to the screw terminals here and it comes in two versions. So a uh, board version for OEM operation or a laboratory and this is great for the classroom and has been used in many universities as a general purpose I.O. device. Now the idea was to merge this board, the uh, microcontroller that does the USB protocol with the analog subsystem of this DAC that has the SPD receiver and DAC. But for that, a little thing else needed to be added to that, which is a great clock source. 
because USB is known to be choppy a bit and and a, not such a great clock for the uh, audio DAX. And I designed a very innovative reclocker that contrary to what most USB DACs are doing, is able to take either the USB clock or the SPD clock and do some jitter killing action on it and provide a very low jitter reclocked signal directly to the DAC chip. Most USB DACs use what is called asynchronous USB. Asynchronous USB is uh, you put a crystal clock on the DAC, you don't design, you use an existing crystal clock, and then you tell the computer to adapt, to speed up or slow down. Whether an adaptive DAC would take whatever clock is coming from an external source and adapt to it, which is what uh, a USB, um, uh, an SPDIF input has to do anyway. So what's wrong with uh, asynchronous USB as this, the device I came up with is adaptive. First thing is the people who are trying to sell you a, a DAC, they're supposed to have a high expertise level in designing analog stuff. And they're telling us they can't design a clean clock that syncs from an external source. What about SPD then? Well, it's simple. What they do is they just have a good quality clock, supposedly if it's well implemented, because just using crystal clock is not a guarantee per se. And when you go to SPDIF, your it's business as usual. It's like this one, which is can be decent. So that means that when you have files stored on your computer, you have great audio quality. And when you have audio coming from another source, like your favorite transport CD or DVD or a set-top box, it's just, you know, it's okay, but it's average. So you have two different sound qualities. I don't think this is okay. Besides the fact that the, the skill set that they're supposed to have is mm, probably not uh, well. Another thing to uh, uh, put a final lay in the coffin of uh, asynchronous uh, DAX is if you look at the official USB 2.0 spec, that comes from the people who have standardized USB in the first place. You look at the documentation that talks about uh, the different synchronization modes, asynchronous or adaptive, and it says word for word, asynchronous sync endpoints could be low cost speakers running off their internal sample clock. Hmm. And in the adaptive section, it says word for word again, adaptive syncs include such endpoints as high-end digital speakers, headsets, etc. So what that means is that the guys who standardize USB synchronization modes, it was obvious for them that a synchronous USB would be for the cheap, low-cost stuff, whereas adaptive would be for the high-end gear. Mm. Just saying. Now, the board I came up with is this one. This is the first uh, um, built board. Um, as you can see, it, it has all the components from the two other designs. That's the audio, uh, analog audio part that's right here. And right there, you have the microcontroller and USB. Plus, of course, the, uh, the jitter uh, reducer, the reclocker that's, that's on there too. And the reason why it's so important to have the same physical format. As you can see, it just the same principle. It slides into the enclosure completely, and it's the same footprint. The big deal with that is that I'm going to be able to reuse all the jigs and fixturing on the CNC machines that are used to uh, machine the panels, the, the back panels and front panels. They um, start from the stock parts and they build the openings to put the connectors in, in there. And this is going to save a lot of uncertainties in producing this DAX and I volume since I've got all this ready and, and it's working on a daily basis. So I just have to define the files that add, move this hole and add another hole for the USB connector and it fits in. The same is true for the front panel and also the marking. It's, it's, um, uh, a piece uh, that is cut and printed, everything can be reused from the other project. So that's a low risk project. And for the design itself, 
all the firmware has been worked out already. This is the final printed circuit board. Um, you can see there are a few extra wires on it. This is these are for debugging. These are not mistakes. This this is proven hardware and software. So the the product is mostly done. Now the biggest uh, thing that that remains is the volume production. So there will be two batches. One small batch, uh, and is the reason why you have the early bird perk that for 20 units only because I'm, I'm going to do a small batch here completely um, assembled with the machines that we have in-house that we generally use only for prototyping and then we're going to use our fab house for the next batch will be a larger quantity and you you want to make sure that everything has been worked out so you can communicate to the fab house all that is required so that you get a large batch that is costly without any mistake in it now um, for the um, use of the DAC uh, that one DAC has some switches for managing the external power supply and batteries and and you had to set in certain modes to make sure the batteries were charging and so on and most people found it was confusing so this DAC has a different design because there's a microprocessor you can do a lot of smart stuff directly in the DAC. So I've encoded a number of rules that come from my expertise and that will just use the batteries the right way um, to get the best sound possible in all situations. So you got a single push button there. Uh, the, the DAC is completely off. When you turn it off, it, it consumes zero power on the battery, zero. You turn it on, uh, the LED comes on on the power switch and then you have an indicator for the source. You can select between USB, uh, coaxial and optical. Okay, so uh, another thing is it does, let's connect the optical input. When you plug, you plug the optical in, you can see that the LED turns on, it flashes a bit and the flash, the flashing indicates that it searches for the best setting for the jitter killer, the reclocker that's inside. And now it indicates the incoming audio through the uh, optical fiber is running at 96 kilohertz. And that is also a big deal with this, this DAC is that it always tell you the real sample rate at which your source is running, whether uh, it comes from the USB or the optical or coaxial. It always tell you the truth. So you can make sure that the, the files you have or the media that is playing um, is actually matched to the DAC. And this is uh, one key to get the best possible from a DAC is to make sure, say, if you've transferred your CDs to your computer, you have the files that are 44.1. You want to make sure the DAC actually is set or your computer is set at 44.1 to, to avoid any conversions. And that would uh, run what is called bit perfect uh, way. Uh, the, the exact match between the waveform inside a file or your source um, and your DAC. Now, if you connect the audio, I have a system running that's that's playing sound right now, so it should be playing right away. Um, turn the volume up. And we have audio that's currently playing at 96. This is high, high definition sound. Uh, and it, it's running great. Now we're gonna uh, connect the uh, USB and we see we we select the source simply by pressing on the button and okay this is gonna be for USB and what I'm gonna do here for USB is first run audio default from the laptop so normally we should have audio coming out of the speakers of the laptop okay that's coming from the speakers of a laptop. Now, as soon, if all goes well, as I connect the USB, then the laptop is going to recognize that, connect to the DAC, you have seen the LED flashing, and you have now the audio that's running through the DAC. It, it has become the default audio output for your computer with no driver installation whatsoever. This is also the big deal with this DAC compared to pretty much anything else on the market you need to install drivers on a computer especially for windows linux and mac os are more robust for that but uh, the default drivers won't work with most modern DACs. 
so you have to download install so not, not such with this DAC which uses the basic uh, audio features that that's in the USB standard and it's gonna work on pretty much I even tried it on an XP uh, system it works well on all Windows flavors with no additional they, they use the stock features uh, of USB audio in Windows all, all Windows versions um, and that that also is a big big deal now when you are done with the DAC you just unplug it and that would be the same for the uh, coaxial input of course uh, it resumes playing from the uh, local loudspeakers I'm going to stop that if you press now this button again for a few seconds it just turns off and it it draws zero current from the battery so you can store it on a shelf and and uh, at some random moment pick it and go to a friend's place and and you can enjoy it um i want to take an opportunity to thank all the people who have come with a great feedback uh telling me how they love the the, the previous deck it's been very encouraging because there have been uh, about two plus years of work on that on that design has been a, a, a lot of effort and i want to i want to say that this, this is really appreciated and now that's when i need your help because in order to release the deck at the uh, expected low price point that i i want to sell this same logic than for this unit high-end audio at a very uh uh, just what is required price I need to build a relatively high quantity of that and I need to purchase a large quantity of uh, electronic components for that and that's what I need that um, so do uh, me a favor and do yourself a favor get a great audio DAC that works well and provide the same sound quality uh, on all audio sources whether it's from USB coaxial or optical uh, especially if it comes from set top box and from these boxes that have lots of wireless audio for example are not able to provide a, a, an aspect of signal that has a lot of jitter in it this is going to clean all your sources and is going to sound equally well on all sources um, if you have any questions that are not covered by this video Feel free to ask and I'll try to answer uh, all questions. I will also post updates. Um, so uh, the progress in the first fabrication batch, second fabrication batch, machining of the boxes that, that fit the, the design of this deck. I will post at least once a week in order to keep everyone updated. Normally the first batch should be able to, to be shipped before Christmas, well before Christmas, so that you can receive it uh, early enough. Most likely the second batch is not going, going to make it before Christmas. It, I expect it's going to be in January, but that's why I have this uh, early bird for only 20, 20 units, and I think it's a reasonable goal. Uh, thanks for watching.